Hello, my name is Amanda. Welcome to the Birch and Lily Knits podcast. Today is March 4th, uh, 2019, and this is a podcast about knitting and cross stitch. You can find me on Instagram as birch.and.lily and on Ravelry as Birch and Lily. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that I talk about today, the show notes will be down in the description below. So today isn't going to be a super long episode. I've been working on a lot of new designs and so I haven't had a lot of time to do just knitting for myself and I'm not ready to show any of those designs yet. So that makes for a very short knitting portion. <laughs> um, but the designs are beautiful. I'm excited. Hopefully they should both be done by the end of the month and then I'll be able to share them with you guys, but we'll see. Um, depends how fast I can knit. <laughs> but I thought I would start out with the giveaway. Last week I had offered a giveaway for 200 followers, which is super exciting. And I think we're up to about 250, 260 now, which is awesome. Um, so I did do a draw for that with the YouTube comment picker. Um, I guess I should show the prize first. So I was giving away this sock set by Dragon Horde Yarn and I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> uh, this is Turkey Coma. Uh, while it is Thanksgiving named, it is definitely not well, I guess it's kind of Thanksgiving-y colored, but this is that beautiful burnt orangey sort of color that I've been loving lately, so I would use this if it wasn't Thanksgiving. Um, but yeah, this is the first thing that will be sent out to the winner. And the other two things are two different patterns. Um, there is a copy of the Solstice Sunset Sock Pattern by Flock Fiber Studio just cover up the Ravelry coat on there. So that is the one pattern. It's beautiful. And then the other pattern, um, when I announce the winner, if you could just let me know when you message me with your address, uh, which one of my patterns you would like to send, like me to send you a copy of. Um, so without further ado, the winner is Jessica Stump. So Jessica, if you could contact me um, either through my email, which I don't know if it's linked below normally, but I will try to make sure that I put it down below. So either through my email or direct message me on Instagram, your address and uh, which sock pattern of mine that you would like a copy of, that would be great. So congratulations, Jessica. Um, so yeah, that is all I have to say for announcements, I guess. We will move into the knitting. I only have two things to show today. One is a finished object and one is a work in progress. And then I did wanna show you the yarn that I'm using for the two new designs I'm working on. I figured I could show you that even though I can't show the patterns yet. So yeah, let us get on to my finished object. I am just gonna put these on sock blockers. Since I don't have lots to show, I figure I might as well put both of them on. Show them both off. So while I'm doing this, these are, you saw them last week, or not last week, two weeks ago. These are my Desert Vista Dye Works socks for February. I'm super happy with how they turned out. I feel like I'm getting a lot better at my afterthought heels, which is exciting. Because they are, while they seem easy, they do take a little bit of practice. So I'm pretty pleased with them this time around. And I was able to do it without looking at the video on YouTube. So that's pretty exciting in itself as well. So, these are my, and there's those little strings that I hang the socks up with. <laughs> these are my February Desert Vista Dye Works socks. So I knit these out of the colorway Zombodies Late. Um, did a two by two rib, 60 stitches, 
Like I said, After Thought Heal, this is from the Kirby Werby uh, YouTube tutorial and just a regular wedge toe. So yeah, I have these finished. I got them done pretty soon after I recorded the last podcast. So I've been keeping on a good schedule of getting them done with lots of time to spare, which is good. I don't want to get to a point where I feel like I'm rushing on them. So yay. Um, and sorry, I don't know if I am spinning or not. I'm sitting in an office chair instead of a kitchen chair just because I really didn't want to carry the kitchen chair all the way from the kitchen in here. So hopefully I'm not wiggling around too much. Um, but it is comfier and it gets me a little bit higher up, which is nice because I'm super short <laughs> and usually you can't see much of me on the screen. So maybe it's better. I don't know. Um, so the next pair of socks, now we're onto works in progress, that I have to show you are March's Desert Vista Dye Works socks. Super exciting, I know, literally all I have this week is vanilla socks, but um, they are in a bag by Birch Grove. I love these for travel knitting. They fit in my purse really well, and these sloths are super cute. Um, so the colorway, I'll show you that first, that I'm using this month is called Sangria. So it's definitely a lot brighter and crazier than the previous two months, but I want it to be spring, so I picked a color that was kind of springy to me. So this is Sangria. It is beautiful. I love how it's knitting up so far. I don't have tons started on the socks just because I haven't been going anywhere a lot and these are like I said my travel knitting usually so this week is going to be a busy one and I'm hoping that I can get lots of work in on these guys but this is what I have so far so did the same thing as the other socks 60 stitches two by two rib I do my rib usually for 15 rows I find any more than that and I am tired of knitting ribbing. I don't like knitting ribbing. So 15 rows is enough that it gives me a good fit without making me go crazy from knitting ribbing. <laughs> so yeah, um, both of these pairs of socks, I don't know if I mentioned, were knit on 2.25 US1 uh, needles. I like to use the um, 100 centimeter, that 40 inch cord. Um, I find I get laddering otherwise, so the long cord helps stop that for me. Um, but yeah, lots of vanilla sock knitting this week, and then two patterns that I cannot show you yet. But, like I said, I will show you the yarn. Um, so I have two different things on the go. I can tell you one is a shawl, and one is a pair of socks. So I will show you the sock yarn first. And I can't remember the name of it, so I'm just gonna check really quick. The ball band is in the ball of yarn. Um, okay. So this is a yarn by Hey Sister Yarn Co. Uh, it's just a yarn I had lying around in my stash. Um, and it is called Leaf on the Wind. So it is just a pale cream base with um, brown speckles. There's blue speckles, yellow, green, kind of those pretty fall colors. So this I am using for a new sock pattern. Um, it's slow going because I've been putting more <laughs> effort into the shawl right now, just because I have a little bit more of a deadline with that or the socks I don't. So yeah, I've been putting lots of effort into the shawl and not as much into the socks. So it's kind of been cast aside for a little while, but um, Really pretty, really excited to show you guys that pattern. And then the other yarn that I have going, and I can't remember one of the names on this either. Okay, so these are both by Sugar Plum Circus, and this cake is now falling apart. Uh, <laughs> So, oh, and I forgot to mention that yarn that I'm using for the socks. I believe it's a 7525. Um, not my favorite base for socks. I usually like an 8020, 
but it's working really well with the pattern so I don't care then uh, so this and this are the two yarns that I'm using for my shawl pattern I'll put the green over there because that light the window is mucking up the colors so this color here this is called Hawthorne uh, it is on her sock base and I think it's also 7525 yes this is her 7525 sock base and then this one here is on her singles base and this is called Dianthus um, so yeah these are the two colors that I am using for my shawl pattern so like I said I'm about halfway through working on it right now I'm hoping to have it done by the end of the month um, partially because my family's coming to visit at the end of the month and my little sister is really good at photography so I'm hoping she'll be able to take some photos for me of the shawl and then a couple other patterns that I have in the wings um, I did release a photo of the one it's a pair of mittens based off of my ankle side sock pattern um, I'm just finishing up writing that up and then it should be ready for testing by the end of this week um, so I'm hoping she'll be able to photograph that and then there is a matching m fingerless mitten pattern that goes with the mittens so yeah she's going to get her work I guess she's gonna get her trip paid for she's staying with us so she's paying her way to stay with us I guess by taking me picture taking photos for me I can't talk um, but yeah I'm looking forward to them coming to visit and looking forward to help with taking photos of my patterns um, so yeah unfortunately that's all I have for knitting today um, I was going to answer some of the questions uh, that you guys had commented on the last video um, in this episode but I'm just a little strapped for time today so I think I will go through those questions and answer them on the next episode um, if there's something that you really, really want an answer to though, feel free to answer it down below and I'll try and respond to you as quick as I can. Um, but I guess we'll move into cross stitch. I have made a lot of progress on cross stitch since the last episode. Um, I've been finding it's a really good break since I've been doing so much designing that uses my brain a lot. <laughs> so I've been doing cross stitching after I worked for the day on patterns and stuff and so I think last episode I was pretty close to finishing um oh that's awkward that chair's been in the frame the whole time um what I was saying though was I think I was almost done with the one pattern pretty darn close and so I finished that one up and then I had started just a small one that I also finished and now I'm working on another big one I find I'm pretty monogamous with um, my cross stitch. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and actually, I think I might have forgot one of the patterns. I'm gonna go check and grab that really quick. Uh, I swear, I think I forget something every single time I record. Um, but our house is pretty tiny right now, so it's not too bad to jump up and grab something really quick. Um, but I guess I'll start with finished cross stitch projects so the one that I have been showing you the past couple episodes is snowflakes by Little House Needleworks so I guess we'll start with that okay so I will show you the pattern first so like I said this is snowflakes by Little House Needleworks sorry if there's a little bit of a glare um, so I did finish this one up beginning of last week, end of the previous week. It was pretty shoot soon after I finished recording the last podcast. But this is Snowflakes. So this is actually my first cross stitch project on linen, which I'm pretty darn proud of. Um, I quite enjoy stitching on it. Ada is so stiff that um, it's really hard to hold in your hand. So this made it a lot easier. It did wrinkle very easily. I tried ironing it, didn't go so well. Might have to do it again because <laughs> it's still wrinkled, but um, I'm not ready to frame it yet. I haven't picked a frame or anything for it yet, so I'm not too concerned about the wrinkles as of now. But um, yeah, 
So that is Snowflakes by Little House Needleworks. And so the other project that I finished, um, what was it? It is the um, Spring Prairie Seasons by Prairie Schooler. And sorry, everything, like I said last week, is in bags, so you might hear a tiny bit of crinkling. I'm hoping the mic cuts out most of it, though. Okay. And this one I have not ironed at all, so hopefully I can smooth it out enough that you guys can see. <laughs> this is the pattern book. So I was working on that one right there. Okay, I had to cut something out there because I was definitely showing a pattern. Um, but what I was saying was I'm trying to get ahead of myself and work on stuff for the coming seasons as opposed to working on just winter and autumn because those are definitely, I found my favorite cross stitch seasons, I guess, to work on. But um, gotta have some stuff ready for the coming months during this year. Otherwise, I'm going to have nothing to put up <laughs> until August or September, I guess. For some reason, my brain always thinks that August should be the start of autumn because they sound the same, kind of. I don't know. My brain is weird sometimes. But this is the spring prairie seasons. And I have tons of fabric left, so I definitely can fit one, maybe two, no, probably just one more on here. But uh, that's kind of exciting. So there we go. That is my spring prairie seasons. Um, I should mention snowflakes, the one I just showed you before this. I did use all the called for colors and the called for linen. And same with this one. All the called for DMC and the called for linen. I think this is, let me see. What does it say? So this is 32 count summer khaki linen and the other one was 32 count raw natural I believe. So that is my second finish and then I have two works in progress. One has kind of been put on hiatus because like I said it's a winter one but then the other one is an autumn one <laughs> so I kind of mucked up the thing I just said before about keeping ahead with of the seasons but um, this one was just too pretty to pass up so more crinkling so I am working now on uh, cinnamon stars by Plum Street Samplers uh, so this is on 32 count vintage country mocha Again, using all the called for colors. And I should actually show you guys the pattern first before I get too far ahead. And we'll try not to give away patterns on podcasts again. Uh, so this is, again, oh, there's Claire. I don't feel like taking it out of the bag though. Um, this is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers. Um, turn it that way so it's straight, I guess. Uh, but I'm super excited about this one. When I saw it, I just had to have it. And of course, it was out of stock on one, two, three stitch. So when I had a chance to order it, I had to start it. Uh, so I'm super excited. I think the pattern itself actually calls for 36 count linen and a different fabric altogether. But I had seen someone do it on the Vintage Country Mocha and I really liked it. And 32 count is all I've used so far, so I just wanted to stick with that since I really, really liked the pattern and I didn't want to dislike working on it because the linen was too small. Um, so I have a couple patterns sitting around that are going to be on a smaller count of linen. So we'll see how that goes, but I do know right now that I really like the 32 count, so. And then I have one more cross stitch project that I was working on for a while. This one here, sorry, crinkling. I should wait till I'm done crinkling before I talk. So this one here um, spoke to my knitting soul, I guess is the best way to put it. This is called Warm Winter Woolens. It's also by Little House Needleworks. But look at that. It is a sheep with knit clothing on and it's so cute. Um, so I was working on this one. I started it after I had started Snowflakes. 
um, and then realized why am I working on winter stuff when winter's almost over. Um, so I will continue to work on it. I might um, actually just try and get this finished because I'm about halfway done and then go back to the cinnamon stars just so I don't have too many cross, cross stitch projects on the go because I know I'm bad with having too many knitting projects and I don't need another hobby where I have 50 things going at a time. I've never had 50 knitting projects at a time. I think I've maybe had like 10, 12, nothing more than that though. But I don't want to get overboard with my cross stitch as well. Um, so this is also on 32 count linen, uh, vintage exemplar. And this is, and I have a string there. I'll move that to the side so it's out of the way. So this is what I have so far on warm winter woolens. Again, using the call for colors, I haven't got brave enough to go and pick my own things yet. <laughs> um, one day, I've just been really happy with the colors that they've used so far on stuff and didn't want to change it up. Though I have figured out, and I had heard people say this before and I guess I didn't clue into it, that um, colors can definitely be different than what you see on the pattern because uh, with hand dyed floss, just like hand dyed yarn, it's impossible to get them exactly the same every time. So. Yeah, I guess if something really, really didn't match the pattern one time, I would probably try and pick something myself, but or color myself, but I've been happy with them so far. So yeah, that is all I have for cross stitch. Like I said, sorry that the knitting content was really short this week. I'm surprised I got to 23 minutes with how little stuff I had to show. Usually I have a massive pile down on the floor beside me, but this time I was able to pile it all up on the desk around me, which really says how little stuff there was. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll try and answer them. And um, next week on episode seven, because today was episode six, and I don't think I said that at the beginning. Uh, next week on episode seven, I will go through those questions that you guys asked last podcast and try and answer some of them for you because I'll have a little bit more time. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great week.